Sean, the importance of the biological sciences in human society is, of course, enormous. Uh, 21st century is a century of biology. If the 20th century was the century of physics. Um, and so we have this explosion of knowledge from genetics to neuroscience that is uh, affecting all of us. Uh, the question is, how has this deep understanding affected our approach to ethics or the new norms of society as we learn more about biology? As does, how does it affect our predispositions, our biases, uh, our new ways of, uh, of creating ethical standards? I mean, we can see this in questions of, uh, of gender, of, uh, of sexuality, of race, a whole, whole subset of w what is the approach we should take to how biology should affect our ethical and moral considerations. Yeah, that's good. Um, and it's, it's, it's really appropriate because a lot of our ethical theories in philosophy uh, started many, many years ago, some thousands of years, <laughs> of years ago. Yeah. Like uh, take uh, virtue ethics from the ancient Greeks, where you're thinking about how you ought to live your life, what you ought to do in virtue of the character that um, uh, you're sort of putting into the action. The character is supposed to be virtuous, matching the excellence of, of the species. Uh, for a long time, uh, we've thought that there were some people that just aren't capable of being virtuous because they have constraints on their, their emotions, uh, like take uh, uh, psychopathic individuals who just aren't able to have the emotion that you would need to exemplify certain virtues for the virtue ethicist. Uh, but now in comes these very precise, very accurate, very um, um, uh, 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 sort of world changing uh, gene editing technologies, uh, say CRISPR-Cas9 or something like that, uh, where you can uh, make slices and change things um, about someone's genome that could then have impacts on their, their traits. And I wouldn't be surprised that someday we'd be able to uh, uh, tinker with, with genomes in such a way that people who weren't able to feel certain emotions are then able to feel certain emotions. So what some philosophers have been thinking about is uh, developing an ethics that is uh, you know, sort of more informed by the current biology and then that pushes back ethical problems. Because now the question, um, uh, gets pushed back to a level about, okay, so what gene editing should we be doing, <laughs> right? Um, instead of, well, this is the way, this is the sort of genetic constraints that humans are given, and within those constraints, how can we, uh, how ought we to act? Well, we could expand how we ought to act by expanding what the possibilities are for our genome. There seems to be two levels of problems with intervening in a psychological trade. One is that you don't know the ramifications of, of how it interacts. If you're dealing with a specific disease with a base pair and allele that, is, that you know traces to a disease, maybe you can do that on an isolated basis. But psychological, there are so many different implications that, that you would have. Uh, secondly, even if you could do that accurately, the bigger philosophical issue is you know, should we be intervening to change the, uh, uh, the morality into the germline of humanity? Uh, th there seems to be a very long-term implication of that. Yeah, I, I, I've heard those concerns. I mean, there's a lot of concerns. One is the, um, should we be uh, doing anything with the germline versus just like you can get informed consent for people to have uh, genetic editing on their somatic cells. That's, that's a different sort of uh, non in, in perpetuity type, of, type of, of, of adjustment. And then people also have some kind of hang up about, well, this is in your genome. That's, that's, that seems permanent to something <laughs> final about it. Um, and I just haven't really been convinced that there's a lot different going on except for just the level of technology. So for example, um, we change things about people's personality all the time um, in the psychological sciences, but with drugs, right? Um, now these aren't usually gonna affect the germline, um, but they are gonna make profound effects 
uh, and they might have profound side effects <laughs> sure. um, sure. with respect some including up to and including death or permanent uh, sort of psychological changes and so forth um, and so it's it, it's not like we aren't comfortable uh, you know sort of tiptoeing in that in that arena and if we are morally obligated to do like I mean if this person is 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 a risk of other people's health and safety for example uh, then I don't I don't see why we should be uh, sort of iffy about that now the fact that the technology is newer is a concern and we should have lots of you know controlled experiments clinical studies uh, to sort of um, look at that with respect to the other issue of of germline uh, tinkerings um, well really we tinker with germlines all the time uh, but we've just done it in a less sophisticated way uh, selective mating for <laughs> example you can get rid of uh, traits in a population by mating in a certain way and the trait falls out right uh, so I haven't really been convinced of the newness of any of these problems it's just a, a matter of degree not a matter of kind